is Deep Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. A hot, humid night in Arlington, Texas. The first college game in the palace that is the new Cowboy Stadium. And the faithful have been outside for hours in the crimson and cream of Oklahoma or the dark blue and white of Brigham Young. For the Sooners, their Heisman Trophy winning quarterback leads his team out for the first time in 09. Inside, it's a top 20 battle set in prime time. For number 20, BYU, and number 3, OU, there's no holding back. Time to lay it on the line. Their moment is now. It's time to blow it. Welcome to the opener of ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. We're in Arlington, Texas for the inaugural Dick Sporting Goods Cowboys Classic in our matchup as the Sooners start to take the field, the number three team in the country against the 20th ranked Cougars of BYU. Welcome to Arlington, everybody. You want electricity? We've got it already. I'm Brad Nessler with Todd Blackledge. When last we saw Oklahoma, they were the Big 12 champs, but they came up short in the BCS title game to the Florida Gators. And partner, a lot of people think that if they make the trip back through this spectacular stadium the first week of December, they can maybe get back to that game. Well, I was down the field watching him run out of the tunnel, and I'll tell you what, you're not going to see a better look in football. What he did last year was direct this offense to a mind-boggling 99 touchdowns. He's very accurate as a passer, much more athletic than people give him credit for. And everybody around him now thinks he's even better as a quarterback this year. I'm kind of excited to see what does he do for an encore in 2009. Well, it's not like BYU has got a slouch at quarterback in Max Hall. They got a veteran signal caller in their own right. Yeah, he's a senior. This is his third year as starter. The key for BYU is quite simple. They must protect Max Hall. If they give him some time, he is very efficient with the football, and he'll get something done. Well, for the third time in this opening weekend of four games, we've got a matchup of top 20s. If you can't play in the shadow of Y Mountain, you bring the Y flag with you. The Cougars and the Sooners coming up from Texas in a minute. Welcome back to the Dick Sporting Goods Cowboys Classic presented by Hampton Hotels. On this opening weekend, as the show is sportsmanship, there's the mass handshake between the Cougars and the Sooners. And Heather Cox, who joins us, asked Bob Stoops about that earlier this week. He said, you know, there's people out there that have a better look at the big picture than I do. I think referring to the fact that maybe a lot of coaches wouldn't do that if they had their druthers. But on this opening weekend, a good show of sportsmanship between the Big 12 and the Mountain West. Speaking of Heather Cox, she joins us on the sideline. Heather. And Brad, the big news out of Oklahoma is their All-American tight end, Jermaine Gresham, out indefinitely with torn cartilage in that right knee. Doctors will reevaluate on Monday whether or not he needs surgery. But BYU hasn't escaped the injury bug. Their O-line is decimated. Only seven available tonight, including Matt Reynolds, who's recovering from surgery on a broken left hand. He will play, but will do so wearing a molded rubber cast. And running back Harvey Unga is hoping his bad luck improves today. He was out in June with the swine flu, lost 20 pounds while fighting that virus only to return to the field and injure his hamstring last week. He told me he's untested, unproven, and guys, he looked very tender during warm-up. Yeah, they really need him, and he's a good one with back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons for Bronco Mendenhall in his fifth year. This is a team that's won 32 games in the last three seasons. So they're a very tough opponent for Oklahoma to open up with. Bob Stoops in his 11th year. He's 9-1 and one in season openers. He's won 109 games. The Big 12 Coach of the Year, and he's got a national championship to his credit. BYU won the toss. They deferred. 
So that means that Mitch Payne will start to tee it up for the Cougars of BYU. Dominique Franks and Ryan Broyles will stand on the other end deep for the Sooners. This place is packed. <laughs> We're going to guess 80,000. We'll know a little bit later. And here we go. The kick will go to the 10 to Broyles. And he got up to about the 25, and that's where Sam Bradford and Oklahoma will go to work. Here's the man. New haircut. Kind of got the Todd Blackledge haircut, which I like. He got bigger guns, though. That was one of the things he said he wanted to do when he came back was to, to get a little bigger, a little stronger, and it was very evident when I was with him in Norman on Thursday. He is bigger and stronger, and uh, the ball comes out of his hands a little quicker than it did a year ago, so... Anxious to see the this year's version of Sam. Sam in the gun on first down from the 25. And immediately we have whistles. That's not the way you want to start. It flags on the field. And it's a false start against the Sooners. Brian Simmons, the left guard. As Bob Stoops looks up there, a lot of people talking about the front wall in front of Sam Bradford and the fact that they lost four very good football players to graduation. They've had to fill some holes, no doubt about it. So now they'll start first and 15 with Bradford under center. Chris Brown on a counter. And he got about three, and that's it. Jordan Pendleton made the stop as you check the Oklahoma starting offense on the top of your screen. You know so much is made about the offensive line of Oklahoma but it's not like they're young just out of high school kids. They're new starters but there's two fourth year guys two fifth year guys. Here they are on the quick snap. Bradford's first throw is complete. He's got it down to the 30. Adron Tennell who they expect big things from and he's a big target 6 4 200 pounder. We're going to see both of these teams trying to play up tempo. Very few times will they get in a huddle. Doesn't mean that they go on a quick count every time, but they always have that option of going quick. And here you see Sam Bradford got him lined up quickly and then looked to the sideline for a change of play. But they always have that threat of going right away on your defense. Oklahoma was great on third down last year, 51%. They've got their first one of 09, third and five. Right tackle move. That's two false start penalties in the first series for Oklahoma. That's Corey Brandon. Fire the snap. False start on the offense. Number 70. They got one from the left guard and one yeah. from the right tackle. The only returning starter is Trent Williams, who's left tackle. Now he was the right tackle a year ago. They moved him to the left side, and he is an outstanding player. Again, these other guys are not young guys, but they are new to starting experience. Well, if you want to pick up your first third down of the year, you might as well earn it on a third and ten. And Bradford comes up to talk to his lineman and not drops back in the gun. Here comes a blitz. Bradford hangs in and we got another penalty. It's loud in here, but it shouldn't be that bad. No, that's uh, that's nerves, not noise. That's, <laughs> that's all that is. Bradford's got plenty of time. Deep out, in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Tanel. And so Oklahoma is going to have to give it up. Bronco Mendenhall's going, well, that's a good way for my defense to start, but he was helped by the penalty situation on the Sooners. I'm sure he'll take it any way he can get it though tonight. I mean, if you can slow this team down and make this guy actually get his uniform a little sweaty, then you've done something on defense. <laughs> Redshirted last year, so this is his first kick since high school officially when he averaged a little over 38. A punt. McKay Jacobson is back deep for the Cougars. End over end. It's going to be great field position for BYU to start. They're going to be near their own 44 yard line. 37 yard punt. Max Hall says, I'll take this. The 43 or the 44. 
You know, the thing that I want to watch with Max Hall tonight, I mean, he's he's had great numbers in his career, but last year he did not play well in their biggest games. Right. I think he tried to make too many plays, tried to press a little bit too much. He needs to relax and trust his teammates and let the game unfold for him a little bit. I, I'm anxious to see his demeanor and his presence here to start the football game. Manasseh Tonga is behind him, so that means Harvey Unga is not going to start the ball game, as Heather said, with that gimpy hamstring. First down, and it is Tonga. He's hit in the backfield. Jeremy Beal with nice penetration, and it's a loss of one. BYU offensively, you look at the top of the screen, and you talk about replacing offensive linemen. They got the same problem yeah. OU had. Well, their, their problem is worse because uh, they lost guys to injury. I mean, they lost guys to graduation, and then the guys that they were replacing them with, they lost a couple of them to injury. So they're down to their third group instead of their second group in some cases. Luigi is in there now as a tailback in the eye. Hall play action. Throw is complete out to about the 48 yard line to McKay Jacobson. And he's going to be the guy that he'll look for now because remember they got to replace an All-American in Austin Collie. And this guy hadn't played in two years. Yeah. He's been on a mission. He was in Japan, but uh, very much like Austin Collie. Speedy, not as big as Collie, but very fast, very precise route runner. And came back off his mission in tremendous shape, ready to step right in and play. He's so, a uh, local product, too, from right here at South Lake High School in Texas. South Lake Carroll. Third down at four. BYU is... 56% second best in the country last year in these third down conversions, and they've got one here. Complete to O'Neill Chambers. And the Cougars are in OU territory. On a third and four, they got 12. The key for BYU's third down success is getting in third and short or third and medium, and that's what they had. Now watch this front five. They do a nice job of protecting Max Hall. He doesn't hold on to the ball very long, but they did a nice job of keeping him comfortable and the nice underneath throw for the first down. As you see, the Cougars up to the line in a hurry, too, at the 39-yard line. Brian Correa joins the backfield for the first time behind Hall. He's going to get the call, and he got a big hole off the left side. Nice blocking on that left side by BYU to move the pile, and they got six yards. There's Harvey Unga. Back-to-back yeah. -back thousand yard seasons and Heather was right on that because he he did not look right in pregame warm-ups He was trying to get it loose trying to stretch did not look comfortable And this is a good move by Bronco Mendenhall and the offensive staff To not put a guy out there that you don't think is ready to go 100% because you better have everybody on the field tonight going 100% Now it's Hall in the shotgun on second and five just inside the Sooner 35 Hall, a quick throw outside and a little bit behind his intended receiver, Dennis Pitt of the tight end, who's one of the best in the country. Pitt fell down also. Uh, he was a little slip coming out of his break. As you mentioned, the ball was a little bit behind, but I think the slip kind of affected the play as well. Even with Jermaine Gresham out of the lineup, arguably the best tight end in the country for Oklahoma, you got number 32, who maybe is the best tight end in the country, and Dennis Pitt, who caught over 1,000 yards with the passes last year. Here's what I was talking about their third down conversion and that's remarkable and Todd said you got to keep it in this third and four or shorter that helps the cause. Two tight ends in there right now. Korea pulls forward. Wow. You know why third and four third and five third and three is so important Brad is because it gives you the option of still having a run threat when you get a little bit more than that the run is is not even a threat they go two tight ends Oklahoma is still thinking pass and they run right at the heart of this Oklahoma defense for a first down BYU only averaged about 134 yards on the ground per game last year because for the most part they are a throwing team but right now they're doing it both through the air and on the ground and they've got the OU defense a little bit on its heels first down Cougars at the Sooner 28 yard line this time nothing doing Oklahoma saw that one coming Ryan Reynolds closed the door in a hurry that fine linebacking core as you Take a look at some of the defenders in the starting lineup for Oklahoma. A lot of people think potentially this could be as good as Bob Stoops has had. 
Well, particularly up front. I mean, their defensive front is outstanding, led by Gerald McCoy, number 93. I mean, he is one of the most disruptive defensive linemen that I've seen in a long time. And, and they've got depth. I mean, they've got backups that will play in this game that could be starters on many other teams in college football. So they've got depth up front and talent everywhere else. Hall's got Pitta now on the slot right. His other tight end to the left. And he's going to throw a screen to De Luigi. And he got it down inside the 25 pickup of five Travis Lewis made the stop defensively for Oklahoma. The play was pretty well read by Oklahoma particularly Austin English who was rushing off the edge. He, you know anytime those defensive linemen feel a free path to the quarterback a light goes off for him and they knew right away to turn and run for the screen and stopped it from a first down. Now their third downs a little bit longer third down at six. Already in field goal range, but they want to keep the drive alive. Ninth play of the drive, in fact. And Hall in the shotgun. Looking right all the way. Looking too long. Waiting too long. And he throws it away. And now we got a little bit of an altercation going on down at the 25 yard line. Well, I say Tonga's got his headgear off. Well Max Hall was looking to get rid of this ball quicker on third and six it wasn't there there was a pressure a little game on the inside and Oklahoma's coaches and players were calling for an intentional grounding he did not get out of the tackle box and I'm not sure the ball even crossed the line of scrimmage I think it was a couple yards short yeah, and you got to do both you got to get outside the tackle box and you got to throw the ball past the line of scrimmage or have a receiver in the area I don't think any of those three were in effect Mitch Payne will try a 41 yard field goal. And I think they whistled it dead before he got the kick away. Yeah. And now it's going to have to be from 46, which is his career long. So a wasted opportunity there by wasting too much time. And now Payne steps back to the spot where he's hit his longest field goal. He was 10 out of 14 last year. You know he, he made seven in a row to finish the regular season and then in the bowl game against Arizona he missed three. So uh, you know kickers psychologically a very important chance for him to get off to a good start here. Let's see if they can hit from 46. This one is no good. So that penalty cost him three points. The Oklahoma fans are happy. BYU had a good thing going and they came up empty. No score in Arlington. Welcome back to the Dick Sporting Goods Cowboys Classic presented by Hampton Hotels. No score between BYU and Oklahoma. 834 remaining. Joe Castiglione, the athletic director at Oklahoma, accepting a check in honor of Sam Bradford who won the Davey O'Brien Award to go to that foundation. Todd, you won that back in the day. Yeah, sure did. The first winner. The first winner was Jim McMahon the year before you when he finished third in the Heisman ballot. DeMarco Murray. This is what Oklahoma has despite the fact that flags fly again. There's been some chippiness out there and this one's coming way away from the football the penalty marker. I think the officials want to nip it right now in the bud yeah. a little bit. After the play was over personal foul unnecessary roughness on the offense. Number 76. Second down. Jarvis Jones is a right guard. Well every penalty on Oklahoma so far in the game has been against these new offensive linemen a couple of false starts and Jarvis Jones the transfer from LSU a little extra effort at the end of the play on that one so uh, really the biggest thing for them right now they just have to settle down they have to settle down and play football concentrate on the snap count and just execute their offense. That's their fourth penalty and now they find themselves in long yardage again second down at 16. Bradford taking his time. Matt claps in there now. The fullback shaded to the left as they toss it to DeMarco Murray and virtually the same play. And this time he didn't get nearly as much as Brett Denny knocked him off his feet. We check in for the first time tonight with Reese Davis. Reese. So far it's been a pretty good day for the Big 12. Not so great for some of the other conferences around the country. Bradford deep in the middle and in and out of the hands 
Up to now. Now we talked about third down both these teams last year over 50 percent the difference so far in this game both of Oklahoma's third down plays have been third and 15 BYU on the other hand third and very manageable yardage situations I mean, that's nope. hard Todd how many times do you think we said three and out back to back oh times boy. for Oklahoma last year not very often Tressway his first punt was 37 yards that's McKay Jacobson. He was an excellent return man a couple of years ago when he played. First time he touched one, he took it for a touchdown. This is a better kick, but it should be returnable. Oh, he bottled it. And Oklahoma's got it. Brandon Caleb on top of the football. Not a very good decision by Jacobson. He had to run a long way to field that kick. He wasn't underneath it in time and again you mentioned he's from South Lake Carroll he's got a lot of family and friends here he wants to make a play probably should have just gotten away from that one. And Oklahoma's never been afraid to use some of their frontline players on special teams and Caleb's one of them. And he covered it down at the 35 yard line and Bradford. Brings the Sooners offense back out with a golden opportunity now here midway through the first quarter. And you wonder if they might not try some sudden impact here after the turnover on the punt return. Nope, they'll keep it on the ground. And it's Chris Brown. And Brown, nice carry for about five. I like the idea of, of running the football some now because of those offensive linemen. Let them get settled. Let them get hit in the face a couple times and get that energy out of them so they're ready to just play. <laughs> Chris Brown and DeMarco Murray both over a thousand yards last year. He's Brown again and he's got a first down. Still going down to the 20 yard line. Last year one of the things that Oklahoma did better than anybody in college football was the turnover margin. They were plus 23. They only turned it over themselves 11 times and normally when they got a turnover from their defense they converted it into points and quick touchdowns and right now they are charging. Usually took them about a minute and 36 yeah. seconds to get it in the end zone after a turnover. They've got a first down their first of the game right at the 20 yard line of BYU. This time. Jeremy Calhoun a redshirt freshman out of Ben Wheeler Texas gets the carry. Kevin Wilson the offensive coordinator again I think doing a smart thing right here getting those offensive linemen into the ball game coming off the ball hard putting their nose on people. This time they do snap it quickly. Here's flags down in the vicinity of a holding would be the fifth penalty against Oklahoma if that's the case. Holding on the offense number 34 10 yard penalty second down. Scott Novak's our referee. They are Big 12 officials here in Arlington with us tonight. Well Matt Clapp coming right at you the fullback number 34 is the guy guilty of the hole there it was <laughs> a little takedown. Yeah. And Matt's an all Big 12 fullback. He's got all Big 12 hair too. That's like WWF hair. That too, is. You know? I mean, that's that's all a lot of things. That's kind of hair. <laughs> so they back it up to second down at 17. Bradford's out wide now. This is kind of the the Wildcat formation for Oklahoma. They're going to hand it off on the inside to Ryan Broyles trying to turn the corner and hurdles one man. He gets back close to the original line of scrimmage. Andrew Rich, one of the guys that helped on the tackle for the second time tonight. We've seen a helmet come off. That might be Bauman, the captain of the defense, the linebacker. It's hard to see his number right now, but I think it's Matt Bauman. We've got a timeout. 528 remaining in the first quarter. Oklahoma driving, but they got a long third down when we come back. Our season starting here in Arlington. Brad Nessler, Todd Blackledge, Heather Cox, BYU and Oklahoma. No score 
Matt Bauman, the leading tackler, Todd for the Cougars a year ago, banged up on this last play. Yeah, he's right in this spot here, and and Matt Clapp, number 34, who got the holding penalty, is going to have a great block on Bauman. He just keeps driving, and I think where the injury occurred was when Clapp actually pushed him into one of his own men, and that's where the injury happened for uh, for Bauman. Here's another third down and double digit situation for Oklahoma. Third and 12. Blitz. Bradford. Completes Caleb got a first down first and goal Sooners. It's a nice throw by Bradford but uh, a little slip in the secondary by BYU helped the cause there for Oklahoma. They, they had two guys out there that were in position to make a tackle short but they fell down. Play action first and goal Bradford to the end zone touchdown Ryan Broyles. The first of the year for the Heisman Trophy winner in the 87th in his three year career. He is so accurate and he's accurate whether he throws from the pocket or whether he moves out to the perimeter. He has great balance and footwork which enables him to throw the ball with such accuracy. Jimmy Stevens for the point after and Oklahoma has struck first. Bradford whether he's in the pocket or whether he's rolling he's right on the money as he hits Royals for the first touchdown of this ballgame. Dick Sporting Goods Cowboys Classic presented by Hampton Hotels. There's the battery Bradford to Broyles eight yard touchdown to cap a 35 yard drive in just six plays. Remember that followed the fumbled punt. And it took Oklahoma two minutes and 20 seconds a little longer than they normally took yeah. last year on the average to turn a turnover into points. Well that's because they ran the ball first. Yeah that's you know, right. They, they, they tried to get that running game going so it took a little bit more time. Matthew Moreland to kick. That's McKay Jacobson with O'Neill Chambers back deep. It'll be Jacobson who dropped that punt from the five. Let's see if he can make up for it. Oh he got sliced down at the 20 yard line as we go out to Reese Davis Reese. Fred Sports Center right now today at the U.S. Open Marina Sharapova goes down at the hands of American teenager Melanie Udon who wins it in three sets seven five in the third and we nearly had a gargantuan upset in college football Navy went into the shoe this an attempt at a two point conversion that would have tied it late in the fourth picked off by Brian Roll and the other way Buckeyes win it by four Sports Center on ESPN News at 11 Eastern tonight stay current with ESPN News all the time. All right Reese. Melody O'Dan, pride and joy of Mayoretta, Georgia. You go, girl. First down at the 20. Possible blitz coming off the corner. Brian Jackson will bring it. And Hall over the middle. First down and a bunch more. Out a 16 yard pass play to Brian Correa. You know, that shows you the experience of Max Hall. He's looking at the defense. He sees the corner blitz, so he directs his fullback to pick it up. He knows he has protection. He doesn't have to panic, and he stays right in there to make the throw to Korea. Here they go. Quick pass now out to De Luigi. And De Luigi's got something working. Pick up of about nine more. Keenan Clayton knocked him out of bounds on the far side. I think right now if you're BYU the thing you're really feeling good about is that this patchwork offensive line is holding up OK against what arguably is the best defensive front in college football or one of them. And right now they're doing a pretty good job both in the run and the pass game protecting Max Hall. Here's a great spot second down and just a yard. And they're going to throw out of it. Hall. Pumps one through, almost had it picked off by Keenan Clayton. He got some pressure from the inside that time, and that's why that pass was off the mark. Well, they were trying to go deep to Jacobson, but Dominique Franks was not fooled by the pump fake, and that forced Max Hall to pull the ball down and go to a secondary receiver. Kind of lucky he didn't get that one picked off because he didn't have much on the football. He's now their way back. In Sooner territory. Max Hall 
Plenty of time down the middle and incomplete intended for Spencer Hafoka. And let's check in with Heather. Well, Brad, BYU already down two players on offense. The staff just decided running back Harvey Ungo will not play at all today, just not strong enough in warm -up. And then on defense, Matt Bauman, the middle linebacker, was hit on the head. They were very patient and careful with him on the field. They took him off the field, did strength and nerve tests, standard concussion, concussion monitoring. They don't think he'll return, guys. And the surest sign, they took his helmet away and put it back in the equipment box. That's probably what they'd have to do for Matt is keep it away from him because he's that kind of competitor. But you can tell those eyes don't look quite right on the sideline. Flags down. No. Gain on the play for Manasseh Tanga, and it's going to be a holding call against BYU. I mentioned holding Gerald McCoy. On the offense, number 64, 10 yard penalty, he, second down. He is such a disruptive football player in the pass game and in the run game, and that's the guy who blew this play up. Not only did he disrupt the play, here he is right here. Now, watch, he's going to just get penetration and not only disrupt the running play, he's going to draw the penalty. He beats through two blocks. And then he gets the holding call. He doesn't make the tackle, but he blows the play up because of his anticipation of the snap count and his quick first step. BYU continues to shuffle in different backs. They've got Anthony Himuli, a freshman in there now with Brian Correa behind Max Hall. Second and 20. Hall trying to buy himself some time. Throws, and it's intercepted by Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds going the other way. Flags are down. Reynolds down at the 30 yard line. Let's wait and see about the penalty. It would be the second BYU turnover, and BYU's heading to the sideline. So Ryan Reynolds is going to pick up the interception. The captain of the defense, the senior out of Las Vegas. You know, Ryan Reynolds has bought. Been through knee problems. There he is right in the middle of the defense. He's going to drop into coverage and read the quarterback's eyes. Once he sees Max Hall leave the pocket, he starts reading the quarterback's eyes, trying to guess where he might go with the football, gets right underneath the intended receiver and makes the interception. God, that's the second turnover now for BYU in their own territory. Here's DeMarco Murray taking the direct snap and going down to the 22-yard line, a pickup of about eight. So for the second time, we've seen OU go without Sam Bradford taking the snap and this time it's number seven DeMarco Murray. Well, Everybody kind of has a little package like this in their offense just another way to to create some running space another way to to trick the defense a little bit. Now it's the stretch play to Murray and he's got the first down all the way down to the 16 yard line. Pick up of six more and much like they did after the last turnover they go to the ground game get it down in the red zone and then go to work. Yep. Well and then if you make BYU commit extra defenders to stop the run then you make them play single coverage on the outside and they can't match up with Oklahoma and here's Murray again flags but the ball is out BYU says they have it if the holding call is against Oklahoma it could be Cougar football and the officials now say it is well Max Hall got a reprieve there the, the interception looked like it was going to cost them again holding on the offense number 70 penalties decline first step Andrew Rich made the hit and Sean Doman the recovery <laughs> Oklahoma running downhill DeMarco Murray doing a great job just Rich just put his head head right on the football it wasn't that DeMarco Murray was loose with the ball just a perfect placement of the of the face mask by Andrew Rich. Two fumbles all of last year for Oklahoma. As Todd said earlier, plus 23. That's just unheard of. Yeah. The good news is BYU's got the ball back. The bad news is they're at their own five yard line. And their tailbacks in his own end zone. Sooner crowds try to make it difficult for Max Hall. Brian Curry up. He's done a nice job carrying the football. Got about three. Frank Alexander made the stop. That's why they call it Labor Day, partner. You do two <laughs> games in three days. Right. And three day, three games in how many days? Uh, six and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Korea again. And not much there. Might have eked out a half yard. Ryan Reynolds, who had that interception earlier, one of the first to meet him. 
Oklahoma defensively they started so strong last year then they had a stretch of about three games in the middle and a lot had to do with the people they were playing in the Big 12 offenses where they really fell off and then they started clamping down in the Big 12 championship against Missouri and even against Florida they did a nice job. It had to do with who they played and it had to do with the loss of Ryan Reynolds when he got hurt in the Texas game their defense went into a little bit of a funk for uh, the rest of that game. In the next three games, Ryan tore his ACL in week six against the Longhorns last year. Final minute of the first quarter, Oklahoma by seven and Hall in trouble. And down he goes, and guess who? That ACL looks pretty good right now. You know, third down and pretty long, backed up in your own territory. Max Hall looked like he didn't want to take a chance down the field. I don't think this was a called quarterback draw. I think he just decided to try to run it out of there, and Reynolds right there to wrap him up. So Reynolds has had a great first quarter. And now punting out of his own end zone is Riley Stevenson, a freshman. Ryan Broyles back deep. And I think they're just going to wait and kick it from the other end. Which way is the wind blowing? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on if they open a window down there. Otherwise, we have none. And that should just about do it. End of the first quarter. Third ranked Oklahoma leading BYU by a touchdown. What do you say? Dick Sporting Goods Cowboys Classic presented by Hampton Hotels. Starting the second quarter, 7 0. How'd you like to be a punter in your first college punt <laughs> from eight yards deep in your own end zone? That's Riley Stevenson right now. And Oklahoma's got 10 guys up. He got a nice punt away. Ryan Broyles has to backpedal to the 44. They pinned him on the sidelines. He did a nice Not only job. the distance, but perfect placement of that punt. And he's excited. You said he hit the video board in warm-ups yep. before the ball game. That one he did perfectly. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese, what do you got? Brad, I just want to get you up to date on everything going on in the FanWave Networks and NASCAR Nationwide Series event in Atlanta right now. Kyle Busch leading 39 laps in. That's on ESPN2. Louisiana Tech just converted a fourth and in inches against Auburn as you look at Derek Dooley, son of Vince, leading the Bulldogs in against Auburn. And Gene Chizik's debut as the head coach. 10-7 there on ESPNU. All right, Reese, keep us posted. Here we've got a 7 0 Oklahoma lead. Moses Madu in the backfield for Oklahoma on the toss sweep. And did a little dancing and lost two yards. Vic Saoto. You know, one thing for BYU, they are in this football game. Last year, Oklahoma destroyed their opponents early 225 to 30 in the first quarter. One thing for Oklahoma in that first quarter, they had a turnover and six penalties. They only averaged seven penalties a game all year last year. Second and 12 here for Bradford. Sam throws it out, completes into BYU territory to Dewan Miller. Remember, he's looking for new wide receivers with the loss to graduation of Joaquin Iglesias, Manuel Johnson, two of the most prolific receivers yep. Oklahoma's ever had. And again, if you're just joining us and you hadn't heard this week, without his All-American tight end in this game. Matt Clapp flags down. Looks like it's going to be another one against Oklahoma. Matt's going, I can't take the rap for this one because I was carrying the ball. <laughs> this could be a chop block, I think. Personal foul, chop block on the offense, number 71. Penalties decline. And that's their returning starter, left tackle Trent Williams, the big left tackle out of Longview, Texas. Seven penalties, six on the offense. That'll drive you crazy yeah. as a coach. And again, they averaged seven per game last year, already seven here in one quarter and some change. McKay Jacobson has dropped one punt today. Tress Way set to kick as you look behind Tress, a redshirt freshman out of Tulsa. This one might hang in there long enough and bounce out of bounds, and it does at about the 11 yard line. Let's take a look at tonight's Good Hands flashback brought to you by Allstate. Remember this guy in the Holiday Bowl, December 21st of 84, Robbie Bosco going to the end zone for the touchdown. And what did that do? It not only beat Michigan, it gave BYU the national championship before any of the other bowl games were ever played. 
for all practical purposes anyway. 24 to 17. Yep. Oklahoma under Barry Switzer was ranked number two that year and played Washington in the Orange Bowl thinking if they won that game convincingly they might win it but they lost to the Huskies. First down from the 11. And it's Manasse Tonga who picks up about three as we check in with Reese again. And here BYU trying to come back against Oklahoma as Hall zips a pass to O'Neill Chambers on a quick slant good for eight yards. And the second time Oklahoma has tried to get to Max Hall with a corner blitz and both times he read it and hung in there and made a nice throw for the first down. Out at the 22 yard line now a little more room to breathe. Max in the shotgun. That looks like a broken play. Yeah. Back to the line of scrimmage. O'Neill Chambers, number four, is the guy that caught the last one on the quick pass. Max Hall, like any BYU quarterback, wants to throw the ball on rhythm. That's what their offense is all built on. And if you give him a chance to get his feet set and be in rhythm, he's very, very accurate. And again, so far tonight, I think the BYU offensive line has done a pretty fair job protecting their quarterback. They're giving him max protection. <laughs> I like that. Out of counter. Out across the 25. Manasse Tanga to the 26 yard line. Austin English made the stop. That front line of Beal and Taylor, McCoy and English. A lot of people thought BYU wouldn't be able to move those guys off the ball. There's McCoy, the captain, the junior out of Oklahoma City. An All-American candidate. And talking with Brent Venables, all of us earlier in the week, I said, does he does he have a little Tommy Harris in him? He said they have a lot of similarities. Actually, Gerald's bigger, taller anyway. But Tommy Harris was a great one when he played in Norman. Sooners thinking about a blitz. They back out of it. Hall in the middle, and he's got his man, the big tight end. And it's a first down to Andrew George. So sometimes you start looking for Dennis Pitt and you yep. forget about number 88. Well, they're both very, very capable guys. 23 catches last year for Andrew George. But again, it starts with that protection. It was a four man rush by Oklahoma, picked up nicely by BYU, and Hall is able to scan the middle of the field and find his other tight end, George, for the first down. Well, you can't do any better than 19 yards on third and six. Well, for one second the video board went white in front of us and I thought the moon was coming through the roof. Did you notice? <laughs> it's only from the 20 to the 20 the video board in front of us. Paul nice pass to O'Neill Chambers again just a little bit short of the first time. Here's another thing that Max Hall is doing as a veteran quarterback. He's varying his snap count. And so that was a long snap count. And Oklahoma wanted to blitz. Well, they showed the blitz too early. So he knew it was coming. He knew he had one guy that was unblocked, but he wasn't phased because he knew where the pressure was coming from. Changing his snap count, forcing Oklahoma to kind of show their hand before they wanted to. Now they've got the option to go back to the ground to either career or Hamuli if they choose on second down and one. And they will. Little draw play. Didn't go anywhere though. Wow. Great what about filling a hole? Travis Lewis. Who last year broke Brian Bosworth's freshman tackle record as a linebacker, and he is something special. Yeah, I mean, he filled this hole so quickly and then makes a perfect fundamental tackle. I mean, just gets there, stands him up, wraps the arms up, and stops him short of the first down on second and short. Korea didn't get an inch. He might have lost six inches. It's third down and a long yard. Korea stays right there, number 33, the tailback in the eye. See if they choose to try to stuff it up in there again against that Oklahoma front. Or will they throw? They will run. And he didn't get it again. And Lewis again was one of the first to fill the hole, along with Sam Proctor from the secondary. Well, this time, uh, short yardage plays are all about leverage. Who gets lower, offensive line or defensive line? The line gets in there, stuffs things up. No penetration, and then Lewis is able to finish it off. Tonga tried to get to Lewis, but he just sort of slid under him. And so Travis, the sophomore to San Antonio, makes back-to-back -back superb plays. Who knows if Harvey Ungu's yeah. not playing tonight would have had enough power to get that yard. So 
They had a second and one. Now they got a fourth and one. Wow. Nice punt. And it's going to fall inside the five down near the one. Perfect punt by Stevenson. Blake Morgan got down on special teams to down it and Oklahoma couldn't be buried any deeper in their own territory. This is how you do it. Nothing to this punting in major college football I guess. Welcome back to the Dick Sporting Goods Cowboys Classic presented by Hampton Hotels. There's the video board we were talking about a little while ago. Got the big OU insignia on it now. That goes from the 20-yard line to the other 20-yard line. That's how big this thing is. And this is the group that's running it. <laughs> and they got a lot to take care of because somebody told me that video board costs more than the original Texas Stadium in Arlington when they built it back in the day. I don't know if that's true yeah. or not. Gil Oops. Brandt told Bob Stoops before the game it costs twice as much oh as the goodness. old Texas Stadium. Trying to get out of deep in their own territory is Chris Brown picked up about five and you say well how big is that board you've got to see this place 160 feet wide 72 high 30 million light bulbs <laughs> and it weighs a whole bunch it is unbelievable if you ever get the chance to come in here for a game or even a tour for that matter do it here's Brown again this time it's stretched out nicely by Sean Doman has made some nice plays on defense for BYU. I'll tell you, one of the real stories of this game so far has been how the BYU defense has played. I mean, Oklahoma, this is their sixth offensive possession. And of their five possessions in the first quarter, three of them ended in three and outs, which is almost unheard of for this offense. No doubt. Murray's back in there at tailback now. I think if they get a first down here we might see them start to to put the ball more in Sam Bradford's hands on early downs throwing it. And Marco Murray and he won't get there the ball. Oh it's a helmet. Excuse me. I thought a ball was coming out of there. Andrew Rich he has put his head in there several times on tackles from his safety spot tonight. This BYU defense is not intimidated. That's Jamie Hill. The defensive coordinator, they are not afraid of this defense. Ooh, that's a crunch offense. job. Andrew Rich coming out of Snow College in Utah a couple of years ago. Bronco Mendenhall, a defensive guy, was a defensive back, also at Snow College, and then went on to Oregon State. Actually coaching the nose tackles this year as a position coach as well in this defense. But he got a great block on protecting the punter. Not a very good kick, but a good roll. A very good bounce. This is going to end up looking really good on paper down to the 41 yard line. A 50 yard punt. When we come back, we'll take you inside a very special locker room. I'm sure a lot of you guys are sticking around for that. If there's a better cheerleader locker room in the country, we don't know where it is. It's here at Cowboys Stadium. Dick Sporting Goods Cowboys Classic presented by Hampton Hotels. Oklahoma leading seven to nothing. Brad Nessler, Todd Blackledge. You know, partner, there were some other coaches around yeah. the Mountain West that thought maybe BYU would be able to hang with Oklahoma. And probably the most uh, vocal about it was Gary Patterson, the coach at TCU. TCU's team was staying in our hotel right. uh, the night before their opening game, and uh, he, he really thought that BYU would play with Oklahoma kind of toe to toe, and they've done that. Their defense has been very impressive so far in Remember, this game. Remember, there's precedent for that four years ago in the opener, TCU got Oklahoma. Yeah. The only opening game loss Bob Stutes has had at Oklahoma. Here's Max Hall going deep. Got a man open and he's got him. Jacobson to the 10. He had a free play because Oklahoma was off sides and Max Hall knew it and took a shot and found Jacobson for a big play. There's his big play man. Last year it would have been Austin Collie. And now we do have a flag down, but it's a 49 yard pickup unless this is against Off BYU. And defense, it's not. Number 22. Uh, the penalty was against Oklahoma. Keenan Clayton was coming on a blitz on the outside. Again, the change of snap count by Max Hall forces the show of the hand by Oklahoma. And once he knew he had a free play, Dominique Franks, I'm not sure what he was looking at or reading, but took himself right out of position and let Jacobson run behind him for a big play. So it's first and goal at the 10. 
Paul's hit his last four passes since the interception. He's set to throw again, or maybe not. Nope. Goes down. In fact, his knee, I think, was back a little bit farther, closer to the 14-yard line. You know, when you're a quarterback, and, and Max Hall's a veteran guy, he's played a lot of a lot of ball in his career. You got a little bit of a of a clock in your mind, and you know you've only got so long to hold on to the football, particularly against an aggressive defense like he's facing tonight. And once that clock goes off, you got to do something. You got to just try to scramble forward and get whatever you can get, and then live to play the next play. And the next play is second and goal, but backed up almost. For the 15 yard line. Just outside the 14. And there's another flag. The linesman throws the flag and he's going to say false start again. I didn't think anybody had a chance to start to be false. False start on the offense. In the 76. By Derek Hillary, second down. Braden Hanson, the left guard, apparently is the guy with a call. So. The only thing I can think of is if he had his hand down in a three point stance and pulled it up to listen to the audible but I don't think BYU hardly ever puts their linemen in a three point stance. There's the numbers the Heisman Trophy winners on the bottom the senior out of Mesa Arizona right now trying to get his first touchdown. And the official stop play again is going to be a timeout taken I think by the Sooners. We'll take a timeout with them. 5.08 remaining in the first half. Oklahoma with a seven point lead, but the Cougars on the move. Welcome back to the Dick Sporting Goods Cowboys Classic presented by Hampton Hotels. Oklahoma leading 7 0. Affleck. Time for our Affleck trivia question Who's BYU's career completion percentage leader? Think it over. We'll have the answer for you coming up shortly. Right now Max Hall would like to complete one as you look behind him on second down and goal but that second and goal started at the 10 and due to penalties they're backed up almost to the 20 yard line. Hall pump fakes one way the throwback slips green to O'Neal Chambers Chambers down to the two ball came, ball out. came out Oklahoma's got it I think no <laughs> yep. Wow. Killing turnovers suffered by the Cougars here in this first half. Well, and, and it looked like Chambers knew where the hit was coming from as he was running across the field. Now, my only question was, was he down before the ball came out? Good that, point. that was the only question I had on this play. Quentin Carter recovered it. Jeremy Beal is the guy that tracked him down, Todd. Beautiful play call, great execution. And right now, Chambers' eye sees where the hit's coming from and tries to protect the ball. But Jeremy Beal just stays with the tackle, and the ball comes out. I mean, he knew the hit was coming, tried to cover up the football, and still fumbled it. They got the helmet right on. You see his knees are not down. That's a good call. Actually, Brian Jackson, I think, is the guy who punched the ball out. Beal made the tackle. Watch Brian Jackson's right hand rips the ball out from behind. Well, a great combination between the defensive end who covered a lot of ground and the cornerback Jackson. And there comes the football. And then wow. it's Quentin Carter in the right spot at the right time. Would have been the game tying touchdown, or at least it would have been yeah. down to the one yard line. And they would have had another crack at the end zone. The only, only good thing for BYU is, uh, <laughs> well, there isn't. I mean, the, the only good thing, I was going to say, the only good thing is that Oklahoma is still backed up. You know, they don't have a short field after the turnover, but, uh, well, you got to score when you get those chances. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Fumble in the field of play, recovered by Oklahoma in the end zone for a touchback. So Scott Novak. Replaying the official review from upstairs with just under five minutes to go in the half. Remember a, a muffed punt, a fumbled yeah. punt return led to a touchdown. And now, just when it looked like BYU was going to even things off, O'Neill Chambers coughs it up. It goes in the end zone, and Oklahoma starts at the 20. And I think Kevin Wilson's going to put the ball in Sam Bradford's hands now and let him start throwing the football. They've been pretty stifled on offense so far in this ballgame. 
Give it to the Heisman Trophy winner. Let him start to move your team a little bit. Bradford in the shotgun. And out of first down, Sam throws a dart complete. Just as Todd called it. And a pickup of 18 as we check in with Reese quickly. Here it's Oklahoma with a first down with 435 remaining in the half. Bradford this time the outs complete to Tunnell and Tunnell's got another first down. And a penalty marker on a late hit. Brandon Bradley's the guy that shoved him out of bounds right in front of the BYU bench. BYU has done a great job of of standing up to the running game of Oklahoma. Now I After think you got to switch gears. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness on the defense number 41. 15 yards from the dead ball spot. First down. Brandon Bradley was there but it's going to be 41 Clawson who hit him. About a yard and a half out of bounds. Linebackers have a hard time pulling up yeah. sometimes. First down now so quickly the Sooners have moved it to the Cougars 35. And again four wide outs for Bradford. They're going to bring a delayed blitz. He throws out complete to Broyles and Broyles put it on the turf and BYU's got it. Oh man. Wow. Brett Denny comes up with a football. Well we already mentioned Oklahoma all season last year two fumbles the entire year. Well, they've equaled that tonight. Well job nice job on the tackle Broyles knees were not down they were on the player and the ball came out. Andrew Rich there to make the play. Jordan Pendleton comes with the hit and the ball comes out. Rich had his knees right on Broyles had his knees yeah. right on Rich's chest so he never touched the ground. And in both cases we saw one guy there to wrap up the tackle right and the second guy comes and knocks the ball out Oklahoma did it and now BYU did it good swarming defense helping your teammates here's Max Hall on first down and he's under a blitz they pick it up he throws in a great job defensively by Quentin Carter to lay out and get his right hand out there to deflect the ball but there's a penalty marker down it's a late penalty on the offense number 64 10 yard penalty. First down. RJ Willing, the center. Working on Gerald McCoy, I think. And again, that's a that's an all-day job. Actually, it was the other tackle, Adrian Taylor, number 96 or 86, who he was working on. It's an all-day job for two guys, usually. Six penalties each. For these two teams. First and 20 now for the Cougars. Hall waits, fires, might have been tipped a little bit, but he got it out and he got it complete to Dennis Pitta. Is that the first catch for Pitta? It is. Guy who caught 83 a year ago. Plenty of time here with BYU going without a huddle as both teams have done the majority of the night. But even with that pickup they've got second down and 11. Hall again completes it again to Pitta. Pitta trying to get to the near side of the marker and he's about a yard shot. Every time Oklahoma has tried to blitz off the edge Max Hall has seen it read it and hit him for a play. I mean he is doing a great job with his eyes of scanning the defense and not getting fooled by any kind of pressures. Now they've gotten to him sometimes just when they beat their guys but when they've tried to blitz off the edge he has seen it every time. Max was number six in the country last year in passing efficiency. Sam Bradford led the country in that category. So we've got two of the best on the same field but we've got a seven nothing game we thought we'd see more offense. This is a big third down here with just under three minutes to go in the half and it's complete and breaking tackles is Korea down the sideline cuts back inside the ten to the five. Well for the third time in the game tonight that was a third and one situation for BYU which means you could run it or throw it Max Hall gets rid of the ball quick against the blitz. 
Korea does a nice job of turning up field and a really nice job on the outside also by Luke Ashworth number 29 pulling off and not blocking in the back and bringing this play back. They've got another first and goal as they had earlier. They don't want to spoil and waste this one. Late in the second quarter trying to tie things up with number three Oklahoma. Korea fumble. Oh my gosh bounce right back up to him. <laughs> wow he got lucky. Was that Ryan Reynolds that met him in the hole. Somebody met him right in there. Sam Proctor the safety helmet on the football. Wow. Second down and goal now. Bronco Mendenhall saying what else can go wrong between penalties and the ball popping out from his receivers and running backs. And again remember BYU without their best tailback Har Harvey Unga out with the hamstring injury their power back. Hall nice play fake to the end zone touchdown. Andrew George. So they don't waste the opportunity and they're an extra point away from tying it up. Second down and goal. Oklahoma guessing run. Good play fake by Max Hall. That froze the linebackers. It froze Dominique Franks for a minute. And he's able to make the throw for the touchdown. Mitch Payne in for the point after. The kick is up and good. So Max Hall, his 62nd career touchdown pass to his big tight end in the corner. And number 20 and number three are all locked at seven. All right, Ray, see you in a minute, 25 seconds. Here we're tied up. BYU, a 63 yard drive in five plays, the majority of it a 50 yard pass from Max Hall to Korea, and then the touchdown to his tight end. And here's the kick, high and short. Somebody better come up and make a play on it. On the hop at the 19 is Ryan Broyles. That was a live ball. And Broyles got to the 30 yard line. Well, a little bit earlier, we asked you the Trivia question, and it was, who's BYU's career comp uh, completion percentage leader? Oh, they didn't even give us a chance to guess. <laughs> Steve Sarkeesian, the new head coach of the Huskies of Washington back in the mid-90s. I did a couple of games when Steve was playing, and he had some nice years there. Yeah. Tonight, he makes his debut against LSU. Not an easy way to no. start coaching. Let's see. Sam Bradford's got two timeouts to work with at a minute 20. And he goes to work. Quick out and out of bounds to Brandon Caleb, but another penalty marker on the play. This is more flags than we've seen in a long, long time. Especially from Oklahoma. Let's check in with Heather. Well guys senior linebacker Travis Lewis was just being attended to by the doctors they had him up on the table and we're doing an ACL test on that left knee now that is very standard anytime somebody tweaks the knee they do the, the ACL test now Travis Lewis trying to walk it off to be determined whether or not he'll return to action that'd be a big loss yeah. I mentioned 144 tackles last year phenomenal player I was only going to get better and better here's a little toss to DeMarco. DeMarco Murray bangs his way out to the 27 maybe the 28 yard line. Well the longer this game goes the more this BYU defense is flying around too. I mean they're, they're a physical bunch. I mean I had them in the bowl game last year against Arizona. They lost by 10. They gave up over 400 yards to Arizona's offense. A much different looking defense tonight. That pass incomplete and flags down. Yeah. Yeah, they, they're going to get Brian Logan. He had his arm wrapped around him and he didn't have to because the ball was overthrown. And I think the pass was too high and wouldn't pass have been complete. On a defense number seven. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Brian Logan, the other BYU Cougar who's playing with a soft cast, and that's not helping him on his left hand. You can see he's got those last three fingers wrapped up. See, the ball is well overthrown. Over to Nell and uh, Logan really didn't need to do it. But right. A gift for the Sooners. 
And a gift of a first down at the 41 yard line. Bradford pumps once and now across the middle completes it. And that's going to be a face mask on top of the completion to Chris Brown. And that'll be 15 more. And it's going to move Oklahoma all the way down to about the 35 yard line. And here's the call. Let's try to get the number straight. Personal foul, face mask, on the defense. 15 yards will be added to the end of the run. Automatic, first out. I understand uh, this whole sportsmanship initiative thing this first weekend, but both <laughs> teams are going way out of their way to help the other team tonight, whether it be by turnovers or penalties. Even the chin strap. Or a helmet opening. You get your fingers caught in there and it's a face mask. And there's no incidental anymore. That ended last year. Yeah. So 15 takes him down to the 36 with a first down for Sam Bradford. Sam had to get rid of it in a hurry a little bit earlier than he wanted to. He got some pressure up the middle that time. I think it was Colby Kloss in the outside linebacker. Now that looked like a bust in protection for Oklahoma because it wasn't an all out blitz. But Clawson came unimpeded to the quarterback, and you're right, Sam had to unload it before he wanted to. So it's second down to 10. Bradford has plenty of time this time. Deep middle's got his man, Brandon Caleb. And it's a first down. Oklahoma needs a call timeout here. They've got two of them. The clock will start again when they reset the chains and they call the timeout. With 12 seconds remaining. So they've got a couple of cracks at it before they would have to try a field goal. There's a couple of Oklahoma guys uh, on the left uh, head basketball coach Jeff Capel, Barry Switzer leaning back in his chair. It was almost a good day for another former Duke point guard, Greg Paulus at Syracuse, but they came up short by three to Minnesota. 12 seconds remaining in the half. You got the Heisman Trophy winner at quarterback, Bradford. Throws over the middle incomplete, and he gets planted again by Colby Clawson. And uh oh, he's holding his right shoulder. That was a zone blitz by BYU. Oh boy. The last thing in the world you want to see on any weekend, but especially the first game. Clawson gave him a pretty good rap a couple of plays ago and now Sam gets hit again and he's dangling his right arm. Well, the, the injury didn't occur on the hit it, it occurred when he hit the ground which is normally the case on a shoulder like that. It was a zone blitz so lineman dropped Clawson beat Trent Williams on the inside it's a clean hit and at the end of the play you see he lands right on the right shoulder. Looked a little bit like that Hainsworth thing on Tom Brady a yeah. week or so ago, but here's another angle and another look. And you see, it's not the takeoff like Todd said, it's the landing right there. So Jimmy Stevens is going to try a field goal of 35 yards to try to put Oklahoma ahead at halftime. And he's got it with three seconds, make it two seconds remaining. But all eyes. Of everybody in this stadium and probably everybody that's watching this game tonight is on the sideline with the OU trainers and the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback. They started the game without their All American tight end, Jermaine Gresham, and now Sam Bradford, the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback from a year ago. Not a, a dirty hit, not a late hit, a normal play, but the impact of hitting the ground right on that right shoulder. With Clausen on top of him. Oh man. man. Oh man. A guy that's been the pass efficiency leader in the country the last two years. 50 touchdown passes last year, winning the Heisman Trophy and going off with an imaginary sling as you see how he's holding his right arm as he heads to the locker room with two seconds left in the half. And uh, you know, I mean, it's worth mentioning, even though it's pretty obvious, that is his throwing arm. You know, it's a little different if he lands on his left shoulder and he throws right-handed, but that is his throwing arm, and uh, that just adds to the seriousness of that injury. Everybody wearing crimson and cream in this 
stadium is doing what that lady was doing on the sideline. Landry Jones would be the guy that would be the number two quarterback. Line drive kick by Stevens to try to end the half bouncing up. Jacobson will get it and he'll go down as the second quarter comes to a close. Not the way any of us wanted the second quarter to go. Not that BYU hasn't tied it up, but to see an All-American quarterback go down to injury, we don't know the severity. Let's go down to Heather. Thanks, Brad. Coach, obviously not very much time to digest Sam Bradford's injury, but what's your initial concern? We'll see. You know, uh, uh, everyone saw it, so we'll just go in the locker room here and see what we what we can find out. Obviously, we're pending a diagnosis, but how does your game plan change in the second half if he can't play? Well, we'll run the same game plan. Landry Jones is our backup. He'll, if, if Sam's not able to play, he'll have to come in and run our game plan. Coach, we appreciate your time. All right, so those are word of Bob Stoops, who you know he's saying a prayer as he jogs to the locker room in hopes that Sam can still play. But our halftime score, Oklahoma by a field goal, 10-7. Let's head now to our Wendy's halftime report and Reese Davis. Reese. And welcome back to Arlington and Dick's Sporting Goods Cowboys Classic presented by Hampton Hotels. Just about set to start the third quarter. Third ranked Oklahoma leading number 20, Brigham Young. 10 to 7 on a late field goal in the second quarter. But that is not the story of this football game or this entire first weekend of college football. That story is in the arm of Sam Bradford, the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback for the Sooners who took a hit from Colby Clawson there. And then after getting rid of the ball, Terrence Hooks let him have it. And then almost on the same play, only a very different landing. It's Clawson again as Bradford got rid of the ball, lands on that right shoulder, and immediately yeah. you could see the pain on his face, grabbing his shoulder, and then heading to the locker room when, in the waning seconds of the second quarter. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Todd Blackledge. Partner, the euphoria of the Oklahoma fans and everything. Yeah. This place is so quiet right now, it's amazing. Well, it, it is amazing, and it's sad. I mean, you know, we, everybody talked about the offensive line. How would they be? Well, think about this. Last year, Sam Bradford, they had 510 pass plays called with him at quarterback. Right. He was only hit 43 times. We just saw him get hit three times in their last possession. So this new offensive line, problems in the game so far. And we'll get a report from Heather on Sam's condition. As the kickoff goes to Jacobson at the eight yard line and he's going to get buried inside the 20 so this Oklahoma team knows they have to rally now with special teams and defense and a new quarterback. Let's find out what Heather's found out about Sam Bradford's condition Heather. Well guys Sam Bradford spent about the first 10 minutes of halftime in with the doctors getting x-rays those x-rays are negative then he was carted into the locker room and in an obvious amount of pain from that shoulder now I've been told he has been diagnosed with a sprain of the AC joint in that right throwing arm. They have not officially given me a prognosis other than to say he will not return to action today. However I did talk to a physician not affiliated with the team that said typically with an AC joint sprain you're out a couple of weeks guys. Boy what a way to spoil a first ball game for everybody around the country whether you like the Sooners or not Max Hall over the middle incomplete intended for Manasse Tonga. And here's the guy they're going to have to lean on at least at the quarterback position. I would imagine that they are going to run the ball with DeMarco Murray and Chris Brown as much yeah. as they can. They're going to hope that their defense can hold BYU in check and that their special teams can maybe come up with something special. I like his arm. I watched him in practice on Thursday in Norman. He's got a very live arm. But uh, he's not Sam Bradford. Second down at 10 for BYU and over and through the hands of Max Hall he picks it up on one hop and got rid of it. Boy he did a nice job. Saw Jeff Capel earlier. That was a pretty good dribble by Max Hall. <laughs> get that thing back and get it out of there. Now, this was a hard snap and a high snap. Very difficult to field that one and Max Hall did the right thing. Get the ball first and then uh, minimize the damage. First time that BYU's had a third and ten tonight. We talked about the proficiency a year ago, but a lot of those were shorter yardage than this. They'd like to do something on this opening march of the third quarter against a depleted now Sooner squad without their star quarterback. Blitz is coming. Hall waited, pump faked, and just overshot. 
McKay Jacobson he had him open. Boy he sure did. Oklahoma tried to come with a little pressure. It was a five man rush. Austin English was the first one to get to Max Hall. It was it was blocked well enough for Hall to make the play. He just overshot Jacobson. He would love to have that one back. Yep. And now their punter who's done a great job tonight in his first action as a college football player Riley Stevenson. And Bronco Mendenhall said he has been phenomenal in practice. We just hope that when he gets in the game he does the same thing and so far tonight he has. Ryan Broyles waits back at about the 40 yard line. This one not as good a punt as his last couple but it will roll down to about the 41 yard line. So now all eyes on our guy that we did not expect to see tonight quite frankly Landry Jones a redshirt freshman out of Artesia New Mexico 6 4 216 pounder there's your Heisman Trophy winner the pads are off and everybody can only pray and hope that he is back quickly. He became the all time OU passing leader tonight passing Jason White. And now here's his understudy trying to lead the number three team in the country against a BYU team that has been very stingy defensively. From the 41. They'll keep it on the ground to Chris Brown and he got back to the line yeah. of scrimmage and that's about it. And, that, and that's really been the story for BYU's defense their ability to stop the run. I mean 68 yards rushing in the first half for Oklahoma you talk about a, an offense that's been out of sync six penalties only 68 yards rushing Sam Bradford knocked down and then ultimately out of the game. And they average just under 200 yards a game yep. on the ground last year to go with about 350 from that guy. And here's kind of an interesting thing about that running game last year. Three games they were held under 150 yards rushing. Two of those games they lost. That's right. They beat TCU even though TCU held them to 23 yards rushing, but they lost to Florida and they lost to Texas. Right. So now first and 24. Not the spot Landry Jones wanted to be in. Inside handoff, Brown, maybe three. Yeah. Landry Jones is a winner. That's one thing you do know about him. He, he led his team in Artesia, New Mexico, to back to back state championships in 2006, 2007. Red shirted as a freshman at Oklahoma last year. So he's been in the system for two years. But that this, mustache is not that thick though. Oh, it's not. Two years ago he yeah. threw 44 touchdown passes in high school but there's a lot of guys around that can do that. Yeah, my dad would call that a football mustache <laughs> 11 hairs on each side. <laughs> <laughs> he sets to throw and shoots it complete. That'll give a little bit of confidence to Brandon Caleb. Pick up a 13 as Sam Bradford looks on. Well, they're not going to beat BYU by just sitting on their hands offensively. I mean, they're, they're going to have to let him throw the football, and you see on that deep out route what kind of arm he has. Still got a third down and eight to manage. And he took a big hit, and he almost got it complete out yeah. to Tanell. That was the same pressure that they hit Sam Bradford on on his last play. It was Jordan Pendleton number one who got free comes on the inside a zone pressure blitz and Landry Jones does a nice job just hanging in there to make the throw if they don't have somebody to fill that gap pretty soon we're going to be looking at the third quarterback because it's coming from the yeah. same spot. Well what they're doing is they're confusing there's five guys up there to block and they're not rushing more than they have guys blockers but they're showing one pressure and pulling out and they're getting guys blocking air and not guys with white shirts. Press way to punts. Oh, and he got a beauty here. Jacobson's got a back pedal all the way down to about the seven yard line. And out of bounds at the nine or ten. Fifty yard kick, only a three yard return. Gresham, the All American tight end, hasn't been in uniform all night. The Heisman Trophy winners all wrapped up in ice. Not a good sign for Oklahoma. All right, football. Dick Sporting Goods Cowboy Classic presented by Hampton Hotels 10 7 
Oklahoma with a lead. Todd, show us what you're talking about, about that delayed blitz. Well, here's Jordan Pendleton. Now, he's going to be the guy that comes on the blitz, but what you got to see as this play stops, right here, you've got three Oklahoma guys here blocking nobody that's rushing, and Pendleton has a free shot at the quarterback. There's only four guys rushing. There's five or six blockers available for Oklahoma, but they're confusing this new offensive line with it disguising their pressure. BYU starting for the second time inside its own 10. Two minutes into the third quarter and trailing by three. Max Hall draw play. And Korea, who's had a big night, filling in for Harvey Unga, and he's got a first down. He's a tough runner. 214 pounds sophomore out of Kaysville, Utah. Uh, this whole BYU team is showing some physicality, some toughness and grit, whether it's running the football, protecting their quarterback, or coming up and playing defense. Uh, they are a, a much more physical BYU team than I saw last December in the bowl game. DeLuigi now in there behind, or with Tonga, I should say, flanking Max Hall. And now it's Tonga that slips into a slot on the left side on first down. Hall. Quick throw completes to his tight end Dennis Pitta. A pickup of nine more. So he's starting to find his favorite yep. target now, number 32. And again, BYU, like Oklahoma, very seldom huddling. Once in a while, a little bit of a bunch huddle when they change personnel as they just did there. But Max Hall's just waiting for everybody to get in the proper spots. And after this play, I'll, I'll tell you one reason why teams like to do that. It's not just to hurry up and play fast. Second down in the yard. Korea, a little quick over, and he's got the first down. When you use no huddle, I mean, you always have that ability or that option of going quickly and, and, and running a lot of more plays. But the other thing you do when you go no huddle is you, you try to prevent the defense from substituting. You keep personnel groups on the field that you want to go against. And so that's why you see so many teams going to that no huddle. You always have the option to go fast, but you also can keep the defense on the field that you want. Here they take their time, put De Luigi back in there with Korea again. Hall on a first and ten. Trailing by three, 11 18 remaining in the third quarter. You just joined us, Sam Bradford, the Heisman Trophy winner, out with a shoulder injury. He will not play anymore tonight. There's a nice play defensively by Gerald McCoy. We've been waiting yeah. for number 93 to do something like that and a loss of six. He has tremendous anticipation of the snap count. Here he is right here, right over the center. I mean, he's like inches away from the ball. And then he has great anticipation skills. Actually, I drew the wrong guy. He was one guy over, but he still anticipated the snap count. Great first step off the football into the BYU backfield. That's okay. You gave Adrian Taylor yeah. a little love on the circle there. There you go. Now the Oklahoma fans trying to come to life with a long yardage situation behind Max Hall. Second and 16. Incomplete intended for De Luigi. Reminder, hope you join us for those two games while you're having a day off. This is certainly no day off for either of these teams. Number 20 BYU trailing by three. Max Hall needs to be really smart here with the football. They can't afford another turnover. Their defense is playing too well. Here comes a blitz. Hall, and he's just going to cover it. They brought the heat. He felt the pressure and wisely covered it up with both hands and hit the turf. Third sack for Oklahoma. See, third down and long is a lot different for BYU. You bring pressure, even if Max Hall gets rid of it, he's probably going to throw underneath, and you stop him short of the first down. Good defensive call that time by Brent Venable. And right now, if you're Max Hall, you got to say, you know what, my defense is playing well. They've got their backup quarterback who hasn't played. I don't want to put my defense in a bad position right now. A punt's not a terrible play, nope. especially where this guy's been kicking tonight at times. This one's shorter and is going to be a return. Royals only got about four, though. Nice punt coverage, but excellent field position for Landry Jones, number 12. 
replacing the Heisman Trophy winner. Can he get Oklahoma's offense in gear? Stick around, we'll find out together. Back inside Cowboys Stadium. It's 10-7, Oklahoma. But remember, they've got a new quarterback out there. They've got a guy playing center that's normally a tight end, number 50 right there, Todd. Yeah, Brody Eldridge, uh, he, this is his first year as a starting center. He's a veteran guy, and Bob Stoops calls him one of his best football players on his team, a tenacious blocker, but a little new to the center position. And now playing with a rookie quarterback. Here's DeMarco Murray spinning his way inside the 40. They're going to need more of that, Oklahoma, to keep their young quarterback protected. But there's going to be another flag. First down. You know, just to follow up a little bit more on the Brody Eldridge situation, he, he's a great blocker. Whether he's played tight end, whether he's played fullback, I mean, that that is what he does. Comes off the football, and he is a tenacious blocker that never stops. Now he, a he little bit of holding there, holding but on that one. <laughs> but the problem, the problem is your center is responsible for making sure guys are square on your protection calls. And obviously they have had some problems with protection and confusion tonight as a result. Here's Broyles trying to weave his way but got only back to the 41 yard line as we go to Reese Davis Reese. All right Reese it's 10 7 Oklahoma with eight and a half to go here in the third quarter Landry Jones comes up has a word with his offensive line and drops into an empty backfield. Jones looking left all the way and throws it complete that way. Dewan Miller had a pickup of eight as we check in with Heather Cox. Well, for Sam Bradford, a bad night just keeps getting worse, now contending with a bloody nose as well. But some insight into Sam Bradford's mindset this year. When he decided to return to Oklahoma, he was, to Oklahoma, he was asked if he feared injury playing with an inexperienced O-line. He said he expects to take hits this year. He grew up watching Brett Favre and said, I want to show people, including the NFL scouts, that I can take shots, get up, and keep going. Obviously not happening the way he wanted it to tonight. But guys, as a FYI also, he did take out an insurance policy when he decided to return to college. Well, Landry Jones looking for some sort of insurance policy as he goes down. Terrence Hooks with the pressure, and Oklahoma's got to give it up. Same thing. You know, they're bringing linebacker pressures, but they're dropping some of the linemen off, and it's creating confusion for this Oklahoma offensive line. You've got an inexperienced line. You've got a guy playing center who has just been center for about three weeks, and now you've got a redshirt freshman quarterback in. Not, not a recipe for a lot of success against a pretty good BYU defense right now. Jacobson waits as we look behind Tress Way to punts. High arching kick. Jacobson fakes the fair catch and it goes all the way. It just made it in the end zone before it bounced back. It only went in by about a foot. The point of the football hit in the end zone. And Max Hall will be taken over at the 20 yard line. Don't forget under the lights in Atlanta. Here we're under the lights and under the dome that is closed tonight by the way. So we got perfect temperatures inside on a hot muggy night outside in Arlington Texas. Things are heating up with BYU and Oklahoma because some of the key players are not playing due to injury. Here's Korea and he's been a key player tonight. Boy he runs hard now. I'm telling Does he you. ever. They secured the edge. It was a quick snap and a quick toss to Korea. And I think it was Dennis Pitta. No, they got a block on the edge that secured it for him. But it was a nice quick play that got to the perimeter in a hurry. And Korea with a tough run. Harvey Unga cheering him out on the sideline. We got an Oklahoma player down. And I think it's Adrian Taylor. The big defensive tackle, another Texas native out of Mansfield. Looks like he's holding his left hip, maybe. We talked about the depth of this. Oklahoma defensive line Cordero Moore is the third tackle and probably the guy we'll see in the game right now. As spectacular a sports venue as you will ever see anywhere in the world. Cowboy Stadium brand new. Jerry Jones the man responsible. He's down on the field with Heather. And certainly the proud father, also the GM and owner of the Dallas Cowboys. And Jerry, you were really involved in virtually every detail of this amazing building. What are you the most proud of? 
Well, I think the entrances, the, the way that our fans can come in the entrance, 60,000 come through the glass doors at the end, and, and I think that's important. And I must tell you, I'm pretty excited about that board and what it does for all of our fans. As you can see, uh, our fans everywhere, uh, if they're looking at the field, the periphery sees the board. If they're looking at the board, the periphery sees the field. It's absolutely stunning. Now you're fresh off of a trip back from Minnesota where the Cowboys scored 28 points in the second half to win. Next game is regular season. Are the Cowboys where they need to be to start the NFL regular season? Well, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the work we have gotten done with our receivers, which was a question mark without Terrell. Uh, and I'm pleased with the way we've developed some depth in our offensive line. And I think we're as uh, far along as we could be. We didn't have serious injuries during our camp, so that was a big plus. But we've worked hard. Boy, we got a lot to make amends for. We ended up pretty disappointing. Well, speaking of injuries, what was your reaction when you saw Sam Bradford go down in the end of the first half? Oh, it's a, a, a sick, just a absolutely a little sick in your stomach. And uh, he's such a really great player, and he's going to obviously have a great life in football and he's such a wonderful young man and his feet are on the ground and you just hate to see uh, that happen on the first uh, in the first game but uh, hopefully he won't be out long. Now you have done just about everything in the world of football from a player to a coach to a GM to building stadiums. What do you see as your greatest legacy so far? Well I, I don't I wouldn't call it a legacy. This is the Cowboys. This is our fans. This is Bob Lilly. This is Stallback. Aikman in it. I really, my greatest time was uh, coaching my kids uh, when I was about uh, 27, 28, 29. I thought I didn't have time for it, but I'd be in the office mapping out plays and running diagrams. I'm so glad I spent the time doing that. I'd have hated to have had something and missed that. Well, I'm sure they loved it as well. Guys, can you imagine being Jerry's kids and being coached by him? <laughs> Thanks <laughs> so much, tough. Jerry. Jerry, you put together a spectacular palace here. We salute you. It is some kind of facility. Third down at six for BYU. Sooners fans are trying to come to life for their defense. Paul in the gun. Here comes Oklahoma. Tipped. And almost intercepted. Travis Lewis got a hand on it. Well, Travis Lewis is six foot two. And uh, he's got a little jumping ability as well. He gets in right up the middle. Comes right past the center, times his jump, and gets his left hand on the football and thwarts the third down play. Heather talked about Jerry Jones being in the Metrodome last night where the Cowboys came from behind in preseason to beat the Vikings. You could put two Metrodomes in this oh, place. This, this place is spectacular. I talked to my mom earlier. She said, I hope the people in Minnesota don't watch this. They'll want a new stadium for the Vikings, and we taxpayers will go broke because <laughs> they built one for the Twins and they built one for the Gophers. And I tell you what, any football team would be proud to play in this place. Nice high punt, doesn't get anywhere near the video board, and the fair catch is taken at about the 22 yard line. With 435 remaining in the third quarter, Oklahoma clinging to a three point lead with their backup quarterback and the Heisman Trophy winner on the sideline injured. Right now, we're back on campus, brought to you by the movie Sorority Row. Third ranked team in the country about 200 miles from home and for Sam Bradford it maybe feels like light years away from yeah. home right now. They're replacing four offensive line starters and a couple of wide receivers that didn't help but they do have two great tailbacks and an all big 12 fullback who's Matt Clapp in front of one of those thousand yard gainers Chris Brown and here's Brown behind his fullback. It's almost unbelievable when you think about what this offense with Sam Bradford running the show last year did. They averaged 548 yards a game, almost seven yards every time they snapped the football, every right. offensive play, scored 99 touchdowns. And yet here tonight, 10 possessions, six without a first down. Yeah, they got a big first down there. Yeah. Nice job by Brian Logan to stay home, or that would have been Chris Brown to the end zone. As it is, he got it out to the 41 yard line. Well, one of the luxuries of having two backs like Chris Brown and DeMarco Murray, you, you should never have a tired guy in the backfield. You, you keep him fresh all the time. You know, you rotate him. K.O. Gundy is the running back coach. He rotates him by feel, but they should always be fresh. K.O. Gundy, the running back coach you mentioned. Mike Gundy, his older brother, got a big win today in Stillwater. Oklahoma State starts their season. 
with a win over Georgia. And a lot of people think that they might be the uh, kind of team that could pick off Oklahoma or Texas to win the Big 12. They got off to a good start at Boone Pickens Stadium today. Here's Brown again. Really close to a first down. About two feet shy though. Under three and a half minutes in the third quarter. Murray in Brown out a couple of tight ends coming in on third down in the yard. There's Josh Heupel the quarterback coach. And there's Kale Gundy right next to him. One of those signals is live the other one's a dummy play. Oops. BYU do they fall in the neutral zone. Nope not yet. Now Oklahoma set big third down. Ball is out now. You know what? They, they got it back. Here's the only time I don't like what Oklahoma does on offense. When they raise up away from the center and look to the sideline, third and one, linemen hate that. They want to go up, put their hand on the ground, snap the ball, and fire off the football and get a first down. When you make them wait and hold on and listen to an audible, it, it is not a good thing on short yard. It's the only thing as I've watched Oklahoma's offense on tape and live that I don't like is when they do that on short yardage situations. So now it's a different situation a punting one that is Tress way to kick McKay Jacobson he's been held in check or they've kicked away from him effectively tonight he did drop one that he fielded this one's going to be a fair catch and he's going to track it down at about the 11 yard line so BYU came in here with Max Hall second team all conference quarterback from the Mountain West which is almost unbelievable because he threw 35 touchdown passes last year but here's a veteran signal caller they've still got him Todd in one piece Oklahoma doesn't have Sam Bradford yeah. in one piece they got a chance to win and this could shake up the whole deal in college football absolutely. in week one absolutely and they've got a great chance but they've got to take care of the football you know they can't turn it over and hand something to Oklahoma right. because Oklahoma is going to play a little bit conservative try to muscle the ball into the end zone with their young quarterback but Max Hall has to be smart with the football and as you said earlier punting is not a horrible thing in a game like this when I said Tonga in the backfield behind Hall and here he comes and down he goes and a loss of a couple. Let's check in with Heather again. Well, BYU quarterback Max Hall limped off the field after that last series. He got stepped on, tweaked his ankles. The trainers have given him that spat look. The tape over the cleats, obviously, back out on the field, but not 100%. Todd, you ever go into a first game either at Penn State or in the pros and get banged around in week one and go, hey, wait, <laughs> wait a minute, guys? <laughs> well, it happened yeah. to Sam. I guess it happens to everybody at one time or another. Absolutely. Crowd getting louder. Second down, 11. Hall in the gun. Looking right all the way. Got hit as he threw, but he completes it. Out to Jacobson again. A pickup of about six. And Max took a pretty good shot from Gerald McCoy again. It's going to be an awfully interesting fourth quarter. Third ranked team in the country, leading by only three. And playing with. Their number two quarterback, who's never taken a snap until tonight in the college football game. Big third down at five. Final 45 seconds of the third. Dennis Pitt of the tight end in motion into the slot on the left side where there's three receivers for Max Hall. Pressure. It is intercepted. Picked off by Keenan Clayton. Well, that's what I was kind of afraid of for Max Hall and BYU. I mean, they're right in this game, but they can't afford to turn it over. I don't think the ball was tipped. Maybe it was, but Keenan Clayton was right there. The bottom line, Max Hall threw this ball into a crowd, and he didn't have a lot on the football. Trying to get it to pit at number 32, and he just forced it. Now Oklahoma's got it back with a half minute in the third and deep in BYU territory at the 27 yard line. DeMarco Murray behind Matt Clapp and Landry Jones at the call. Murray. Murray into the secondary. Down to the 13 yard line. 
And now those 2,000 yard tailbacks know that they've got to carry the load. They're fresh, they're both physical, and this BYU team on defense may be starting to show a little signs of fatigue. At the 14, quick snap on first down. Murray again at the 10 and down to the 8. Six more for DeMarco Murray, who got injured on the opening kickoff of the Big 12 championship with a hamstring pull. But before that, he'd already rushed for over 1,000 yards on the season. We played three. Sam Bradford says we got to own the fourth quarter without me. Will they? We'll find out. Welcome back to Dick's Sporting Goods Cowboys Classic presented by Hampton Hotels. Well, the Heisman Trophy winner Sam Bradford told us this week if there's one thing he wanted to be more this year was a leader. He's got a lead injured tonight. Well, the one thing that I really wanted to get better at, uh, I wanted to take more of a leadership role on this team. You know, I felt like that I had an opportunity this year, you know, coming back, being my third year playing. You know, I have a great opportunity to be a, a very vocal leader and take control of this team. And I feel like towards the end of last year, you know, I kind of stepped up and I did become more of a leader, but it's something that I wanted to improve on even more coming back this year. Todd, he wasn't expecting to do it with a sling yep. on his shoulder, but that was the scene at the end of the third quarter. Well, and that's what Sam Bradford is. I mean, he is the unquestioned leader of this football team, whether he's out there or not. And when he speaks, those guys all listen to him. And right now, his protege, Landry Jones, is going to try to get this offense in the end zone. Chris Brown, the tailback behind Matt Clapp. And again, the three tight ends look up to the sideline the linemen stay stationary second down and four to start the fourth quarter Oklahoma clinging to a three point lead but trying to add to it here Chris Brown cuts inside the five and it's first and goal the eighth straight run by the Sooners and while BYU's defense has made them earn every yard, I think I agree with you, partner. They're starting to wear a yeah. little bit thin. And this is playing to the strength of this offensive line. First and goal, on. Brown. This time he's wrapped up again, though. They're not done trying. There's the all-conference defensive end, Jan Jorgensen. Oklahoma tried to go on a quick count right there, and BYU was ready for it. They were not fooled. They were in their stance. They played the play with good leverage. And they came up with a nice stop. Rocco Mendenhall. Teams won 10 games last year, 11 the previous two seasons, and they're giving number three Oklahoma all they can handle. Second down and goal. Broyles and Tennell both split to the top of your screen. But it's Chris Brown again, and Brown goes down again. Boy, a great play by Jordan Pendleton. I mean, he got in there, he made a play in space. Because that looked like Brown, if he could bounce past Pendleton, he would have walked yeah. into the end zone. Pendleton and Clawson, those two outside linebackers, had played a remarkable football game tonight. And remember, Matt Bauman, their captain yeah. middle linebacker, went out with an injury early in the ball game. Oklahoma's had a terrible time on third down conversions after we bragged about how they did it last year. Here's third and goal. DeMarco Murray flanking Landry Jones in the gun. Jones. To the end zone, incomplete, and a flag. Going to have a pass interference on Brian Logan. Well, it looked like he made a nice play with his left hand, but grabbed with his right pass hand. On a defense number seven, foul is in the end zone. Ball will be placed at the two-yard line. That was Automatic. oh First so down. close. He still can't believe it. He thought he made a good play. Let's take another look. Left hand. Good play, right hand, hard to see from that angle. You might see it here, though. He was trying to get it out of the way. Boy, that looked like a pretty good play. I thought so, too. At any rate, first and goal, Oklahoma. Trying to extend their three-point lead. Play action. Jones throws, and it's broken up at the goal line by Pendleton. <laughs> Well, they're not pulling any punches no. with their freshman quarterback, I guess. That's really great discipline by BYU's defense, because I would have thought with all those running plays, they faked the run on first down. This I would have thought this would have been wide open, but BYU read it and was not fooled. Second and goal. DeMarco Murray up the middle. 
Did he get there? Not quite. The officials both come in. They're going to spot him at about the one foot line, it looks. Romney Fuga, the nose tackle, made the hit. You talk about a big third down. There's the head coach at BYU hoping for a goal line stand. It'll be clap the fullback DeMarco Murray the tailback in the eye Oklahoma third and goal at the BYU one Jones looks to the sideline to Josh Heupel and company for the call. He'll quarterback keep it. No signal. He's not in again. I don't like third down fourth down one yard short yardage taking all that time at the line of scrimmage linemen like to get up snap the ball and fire off the football and, and this just helps the defense I think everybody just took a big deep breath in here about 80,000 of our friends it's fourth down and about a foot Chris Brown back in at tailback fourth and goal again Oklahoma has a look to the sideline. And now even Clapp forgot get the, the play snap off. count. The play clock's done. Penalty markers delay a game Oklahoma. Wow. Now they got a kick. I, I know Oklahoma doesn't huddle. But I still think on those short yardage plays, you got to get up, get down, and go. Celebrating its fifth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds. They put $1.8 in so far. Right now, Jimmy Stevens would like to put one in right in the middle of the goalposts. But a timeout taken. BYU, BYU took one. Nine penalties. Assessed against Oklahoma's offensive unit. That last one just killed an opportunity for seven. Saturday Tailgate is brought to you by the Margaritaville Tailgating Grill, the only grill that lets you take the party with you wherever you go. Oklahoma brings out its field goal unit. And Jimmy Stevens, who hit a 35 yarder earlier tonight. He's going to try to tack another one on from about 23 yards away. Remember the penalty down at the one yard line forced this fourth and goal that moved the line of scrimmage back to the six. This still would only give Oklahoma a six point lead and it's a one possession game and a lot of time remaining. Stevens from 22 and he tucked it in the left upright. Well Oklahoma had three drives that started on a short field and they came away with only 10 points a touchdown and that field goal right there. Bob Stoops says we'll take what we can get right now against BYU. Now well, and for Max Hall he's got an opportunity to do something uh, great with his football team and for his football team. I mentioned last year in their big games he did not play well in losses to TCU in Utah. He only completed 50 52 percent of his passes he threw seven interceptions he fumbled it three times and no touchdowns. He's had a couple turnovers tonight but he still has his team in a position to pull off a, a huge upset here on the opening weekend. Let's take a look right now at the Sears drive recap with 1147 remaining in the ball game. Landry Jones. The overthrow, but the pass interference that he had one knocked down. Tried a quarterback sneak, got it down to about the two foot line, but then a penalty moved it back. It's, they had to settle for Stevens field goal, a 22 yard drive and eight plays and a 22 yard field goal. 13 7 Oklahoma. Great kickoff. Stephen Thomas bringing it out of the end zone and out to about the 22 yard line. Well we came in with a Heisman Trophy winner looking to try to somehow repeat what he did a year ago. It'd be almost impossible throwing 50 touchdown passes last year but there's 
was his first one of the season. But this is the second quarter when the pressure started coming, and that's the hit by Colby Clawson. And the sprained shoulder suffered by Sam Bradford, and that put him out for the Knights. He's on the sideline. He rallied his team around him at the end of the third quarter. Trying to be a leader without being on the field. We'll see if that pays off. The defense now trying to dig in because all BYU needs is a touchdown to lead. Hall scans the field, comes short across the middle, only got about a two-yard gain to Tonga. And we're down to 11 and a half minutes. Well, the corners for Oklahoma have really played well tonight. Brian Jackson and Dominique Franks, they were new starters last year. And they had veteran safeties. Well, now they're the veterans, and the safeties are new. But the outside receivers for BYU have had virtually nothing open for them tonight. Hall again throws short over the middle, almost the same exact results. And it's Travis Lewis, the linebacker, who's had a whale of a game, even though he got dinged up a little bit earlier. Yeah, they had those safeties last year. They had Nick Harris and Lindy Holmes. Now they got Sam Proctor and Clinton Carter, but they played pretty well tonight. Yep, they have. Well, here's the biggest third down of the night so far. Four wide outs for Hall on third down and six. The throw's complete, and it is a first down to pit of the tight end. And the reason that first down was so huge for BYU, even if they don't score on this possession, they got to let their defense rest a little bit. They, they got to try to get some field position and they got to let that defense rest. Good protection for Hall. Pitta knows what he needs for the first down and secures the catch right past the marker. Now you look behind Max with Korea, who's been quite a running back tonight, flanking him. This time he's looking right and in trouble. And down he goes. Fourth sack of the night. This time it's Austin English. Let's go to Reese Davis now for a sports center right now. Reese. It's out. Former Georgia star John Isner knocking him out, meaning it wasn't totally a bad day for the dogs. So the fifth seed is gone in the third round of the U.S. Open. And Texas is cruising against Louisiana Monroe. Colt McCoy nearing 300 yards, passing 45 10 lead there. Now Colt having a good night, but his good buddy Sam Bradford's on the sideline in a sling. The two top Heisman vote getters last year. Two years ago, Tim Tebow won it. Last year, he was third. That guy was first. Colt McCoy was second. Josh Heupel, who won a national championship for Oklahoma as a quarterback coach, talking to both those guys. Another third down. And this time they need it all. Third and ten. Paul's going to try to roll away from the pressure. Throwing on the run, and what a shot! Down inside the 50 to Pitta again. Well, I think that could have been a late hit on Max Hall. Also, they didn't call the foul on Frank Alexander. But it was a beautiful throw on the run. This was a design moving the quarterback out of the pocket. He didn't scramble on his own. And Pitta runs the out cut and a perfect throw under duress by Max Hall. You see that route run by Pitta coming off the line first and then just planning and knowing the ball was going to be there. And it was a perfect throw. First and ten. Nearing eight and a half minutes. BYU on the drive. Oklahoma by six. Clinging to a number three national ranking right now. They're just clinging, trying to hope to win. Paul pump fakes one way, comes back, trying to throw a slip screen to Jacobson, and they blew that up as we check in on the sideline with Heather and Max Hall getting up slow again. Heather. Well, guys, Todd was just talking about how BYU did not play, play well in the big games last year. What a difference a year makes. Coach Mendenhall takes all the responsibility for his team's poor performance, telling me teams play as they're coached. If our quarterback doesn't play well, then we have failed to prepare him. He said last year, I didn't prepare our team on how to come free from behind because we hadn't been in that situation. We have worked on it throughout the offseason, and he's assured me they are now ready for situations just like this one. They're only six behind. Eighth play of their drive on a second and ten. Hall again splits it down the middle to Pitta. 
And all of a sudden, the All-American tight ends become the number one man. See, they have nothing available on the outside. The, the wide receivers are not getting open against Oklahoma, but there are spaces and creases in this defense inside, and guys like Pitta and Andrew George, the other tight end, are finding some, some holes in that defense. Now an eye backfield as Hall comes up under center as they moved it to the Oklahoma 35 yard line. They'll go back to the ground game. Korea trying to get the corner. No way. Lost about three. Gerald McCoy. <laughs> Talk about fast and yeah. a penetrator on top of it. Well he's disruptive. I mean he you know he changes the line of scrimmage because of his quickness and his anticipation and then you see just his down the line speed chasing down the tailback. 300 pound guys aren't supposed to move that fast. No. They didn't when I played. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, goodness. Thank goodness. Thank goodness for you. Wow. Second down 13. Andrew George the other tight end moves into a slot on the right side as Hall goes left. De Luigi. And he's horse collared out of bounds by Travis Lewis again. Seven minutes remaining. Very methodical drive right now for BYU and the good thing you know, even if they don't get a go ahead touchdown on this drive they've at least changed the field position starting in the second half their average starting field position was their own 15 yard line and they turned the ball over in their own territory three times in the game tonight so at least they're in a different part of the field right now on this drive they've converted a third and six and a third and ten will split it down the middle this is third and eight. Pitt has been the man so far for Max Hall on this drive. Draw play. De Luigi got away from a couple. Still on his feet, but he's going to be short of the first down. Got to the 29. And now they've got to think about a fourth down and a long three, maybe four. And they line up immediately. They're not waiting for anything. And they snap it. On fourth down, and they've got it. Pitta. You know what that was? That's like a two-point play that they knew what they would run on a two-point conversion play. They lined up quickly, and they snapped the football, and they caught the Oklahoma defense still trying to get lined up and ready. Right in between the two linebackers, Ryan Reynolds and Keenan Clayton, Pitta slipped right in there because Reynolds or Clayton, neither one was set to run the defense. Now it's first and goal BYU. So you can't do that with a redshirt freshman quarterback. No. But with a third year starting senior, you sure can. That was beautiful. Quentin Carter banged up. He's coming off, limping off from that safety position. And you can see the excitement. Manasseh Tonga is going, let's go, let's snap this thing. Boy, how often do you see a team on fourth down have to call a timeout, try to decide what play they want? They lined right up, went on a quick count, knew exactly what they wanted to do, and got the first down and more. At the seven yard line, first and goal Cougars try to take the lead from the third ranked Sooners of Oklahoma. Pitta in motion. Second man through is Korea. Maybe got to the six. That's about it. Five and a half minutes. The Heisman Trophy winner and All-American can only look on and look up at the scoreboard. His team clings to a six-point lead. And there's nothing Sam Bradford can do about it. He's hoping Gerald McCoy and company can. BYU's other only other score, their only touchdown in the game, came on a second down and goal play. It was a play action pass. This looks like a pass all the way with this formation. Two of their tight ends to the left side. Play action. Hall fires high and incomplete intended for Andrew George, but a flag comes in. Dominique Franks tangled up with Andrew George, a big 6'5, 250 pound tight end. Pass interference on a defense number one. Foul was in the end zone. Ball will be placed at the two yard line. Automatic first down. Franks is a physical corner at six foot 192 but a much bigger target in Andrew George you saw the push in the back before the ball got there that was a good call he still almost caught that thing yep. Andrew George 6'5, 250 
The ball was thrown high, which is a good decision by Max Hall, and Dominique Franks was out of position to make a play on the ball. Korea behind Tonga and Max Hall. First and goal. BYU at the Oklahoma two-yard line. It's Korea on the stretch play. Not going to get there, but he got awfully close. Picked up about a yard. Gerald McCoy, I don't know how many tackles he's made just on this drive. And there is a hush of silence because even though there's a lot of BYU fans in blue and white, this is mostly a crimson yeah. and cream crowd of 75,100, 75,437. Second down and goal, BYU. Seven and a half minutes they've had the football. Korea, no! Wow, as he met in the hole. Guess who? Yeah, they're two of the heart and soul of the defense. Gerald McCoy and Ryan Reynolds, the middle linebacker, were there together to make the stop. Watch these two, 93 and 4, right there together. Right at the goal line. You got to think, Todd, that that was your play action yeah. down. Now it's third down, and they actually lost a little bit. Third and goal at the two-yard line. BYU try to take the lead. We approach three and a half minutes remaining in the ball game. That's Pitta out wide here at the tight end. Now he's going to come in motion. Third and goal. Whistles. And penalty markers all over the place. Wow. Well, that just took away the run. Yeah, that's pretty uncharacteristic for Max Hall. I mean, we saw. His counterpart Landry Jones do it down in the Oklahoma attempt to score, but you wouldn't expect Max Hall to do that. Lose track of the play clock and not get the snap off. This is maybe a blessing in disguise instead of trying to power football. You know now at the seven yard line and the 16th play of the drive with your senior quarterback trying to get it in the end zone. You'll know in a second if he does. Hall to the end zone. Touchdown! A wide open McKay Jacobson for the score. Well, Max Hall did a beautiful job of buying himself a little more time by moving slightly out of the pocket. He didn't scramble. He didn't look to run. He just got himself a little clearance and a better throwing angle. The all-important extra point by Mitch Payne is good. One quarterback can do nothing about it. The other one can. Max Hall to the back of the end zone. BYU leads Oklahoma with three minutes and change remaining. A shocker, a possibility here in Arlington, Texas. It's 14-13. Sam Bradford threw a touchdown pass in the first quarter, but then was injured late in the second quarter. Oklahoma's only been able to add a couple of field goals and a 78 yard march in 16 plays engineered by Max Hall and here's the touchdown. Well McKay Jacobson gets the touchdown but right there Dennis Pitta is the guy that the entire Oklahoma defense is going to key on. Watch when Pitta crosses the goal line now one two three four defenders all are focused on Pitta and Jacobson is going to sneak in behind all of them for the throw from Max Hall. Dennis Pitta the go to guy was a decoy on that play and Max Hall picked him apart. What a drive. Max Hall was nine of ten on that 16 play drive. Eight minutes and 44 seconds and they had the lead with three minutes and three seconds remaining. How big now is it that Oklahoma wasn't able to convert a short field so many times into just one touchdown and one wow. field goal. This one goes out of bounds. That's about the last thing you want yep, to do as a kicker. That's a mistake. That is a mistake so for this BYU. Is, this is great field position now. The problem is you don't have Sam Bradford at quarterback, and I'm not taking anything away from Landry Jones. It would be a good one somewhere down the line, but if you're an Oklahoma fan, you're going, 
If we had Sam Bradford, I like our three minutes and three seconds. I'm not sure if I like it right now when he's not wearing a helmet and pads. Dick Sporting Goods Cowboys Classic presented by Hampton Hotels. Part of kickoff week. What a way to kick it off. Jermaine Gresham, All-American tight end in the gray T-shirt on the left. Sam Bradford, the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback with his arm in a sling on the right. Gresham injured a knee this week. They don't know how long he'll be out. Sam Bradford, a shoulder injury late in the second quarter. They don't know how long he'll be out. But for Oklahoma fans, now they find the backup quarterback Landry Jones running the show, number 12, and he'll start from the 40-yard line. Uh, and for Landry Jones, you know, as a quarterback, you you grow up dreaming of being in situations like this, trying to bring your team from behind to run a, a two-minute offense, even though this isn't in essence that. They've got three minutes and three seconds left. They've got all three of their timeouts, and realistically, they need to gain 35 yards. They, they start on the 40. If they get to the 25, that gives their kicker, Jimmy Stevens, a chance to equal his career best. So uh, that's the situation right now for Landry Jones. We'll keep our eye on that far 25 yard line left of your screen. That's the point they've got to get to. They just need a field goal to win. And a one hopper to a wide open Adron Tunnell. And that shows the butterflies, I'm sure, that are going through that young man's stomach right now. I thought it was interesting when we talked to Bronco Mendenhall this week. I mean, they were not afraid of this game. And, and his vision for this program at BYU is very clear. He says, we want to get back to being one of the nation's elite, not just being nationally respected. Well, if they win this thing and pull this off, even with Sam Bradford injured, they take a major step forward. Here comes a blitz on Jones, and he rifles one incomplete. Diving attempt by Brandon Caleb. And 255 remaining. The other thing that BYU has, has felt and accepted and embraced coming into this game is that they kind of carry the banner for the Mountain West Conference as right. well. Mm -hmm. There's three teams ranked in the top 25 BYU, Utah, and TCU, but a very high profile interconference game tonight for BYU. A huge third down for Jones. Third and 10. Fires sideline and got his man. It's a first down to Brandon Caleb. And a pickup of 12 when they absolutely had to have it. And again, you see the strength of his arm, that deep out, one of the toughest throws to make. Right on target with it. Now they can go back to the run if they choose to do so, though they stay in the shotgun. It's DeMarco Murray that flanks him in the gun. He's going to flare it out to Murray. Lost his footing a little bit on the sideline and picked up about three yards. Brandon Bradley knocked him out of bounds. 2.33 left. Again, no sense of panic for Landry Jones. There's two and a half minutes left. They've got all three timeouts. And they already run a no huddle. That's their normal offense. So it's not like they're doing anything out of character for him right now. And the key is take care of the football. Don't give up a sack and don't try to force it if it's not there. Second down and seven. Again, he looks to the sideline to the call. And he's going, okay, I hope I have it. Five seconds on the play clock. They get it away. He rolls to his left, throws back across his body, and got it. Terrattery, the tight end. Well, there's two big throws from the young guy. Yep. Under two minutes. Showing a lot of poise right now. Running this offense. A design roll of the pocket, moving the quarterback to a different launching position. And he does a nice job of getting it to his tight end. Now he comes up under center. Let's see if they run it on first down. They will. Tripped up, though. Nice job by Jordan Pendleton. Boys, he had a nice game. Number one, the outside linebacker who got a hand on the shoe of DeMarco Murray to trip him up. 138. And Oklahoma with a timeout. We'll take a break. Catch your breath. We got 138 to play, and number three Oklahoma's in some trouble in Arlington, Texas. <laughs> Dick Sporting Goods Cowboys Classic presented by Hampton Hotels. I'm not sure it's been a classic the way people thought, but I think we have a classic ending coming up. 138 remaining. 
Jimmy Stevens career long the line of scrimmage would be where the red line is first down markers at the 23 Landry Jones throws high but caught nope, incomplete. Nope, incomplete at the 30 yard line Adron Tennell well timed hit by Brian Logan he was there right as the ball got there and Tennell was not able to bring the ball into his body after the catch had it in his hands but was hit by Logan almost immediately remember the BYU kickoff went out of bounds so yep. Oklahoma started this drive at their own 40 with 303 left to play now it's the eighth play of the drive with 94 seconds remaining in the ball game third down and nine now they can get to Stevens is marked without getting a first down here Landry Jones just needs to get a completion here first down would be great but not necessary and flags fly again it has been a flag happy game tonight. Prior to snap, ball start on the offense. Number 70, five yard penalty. Oh, Third down. Now they really do need a big chunk yeah. of yardage. We have seen two very costly penalties on this drive. The kickoff out of bounds by BYU was huge. And now this one with a red shirt freshman quarterback, you go from, wow, third and six to uh, third and 14. That's a 12th penalty against Oklahoma 10 on their offense. Now they need a big chunk of yardage even to give Jimmy Stevens a chance. I'm not saying he can't hit from there but I wouldn't want to put my money on it. Here comes the blitz Jones in trouble trying to scramble out of it throws on the run and it's incomplete. And now it's fourth down. Well good call by the BYU defense go after the young quarterback bring pressure he tried to step up in the pocket and he kept his eyes downfield what you want a quarterback to do just couldn't make the accurate throw. I'm looking at Bob Stoops on the sideline I'm looking at the wide receivers Broyles and Tennell and they got to talk this thing over. it's fourth down in a mile one time out left for Oklahoma. Last time BYU won against a top 10 team was way back almost 20 years ago in a non conference game they beat Miami yep. 28 to 21. Yeah. Well they're they're celebrating the 25th anniversary of their national championship team we saw a little bit of highlights of Robbie Bosco. This would be an unbelievable way to start their season they've got Florida State coming up this month for Oklahoma. Let's be honest let's put this thing in perspective right now. If they don't pick up this fourth down or hit a long field goal and they lose this game they would have to run the table to have a chance yeah. to be in the BCS National Championship. This is not a conference game so they could still win the Big right. 12 and maybe be there. They're going to try a field goal of 54 yards Going with a different kicker going with their longer kicker. And that's Tress Way who's been punting tonight. Yeah, so now timeout taken by BYU. I think this is what they have to do. They got to try to kick this. I, I don't think you want to put this on your redshirt freshman quarterback to convert a fourth and 14 against a BYU defense that has played extremely well. Now Tress Way is a young guy too, but I think your chances are a little better of him hitting the field goal than of Landry Jones hitting a third down and long. Let's take you back to Union High School in Tulsa. The longest field goal Tressway ever hit in high school was 47 yards. This is going to be seven yards farther, but they're going to give him a crack. And he could run for Mayor and Norman if he hits yeah. this thing. They are indoors. The conditions are perfect. Redshirted last year. Carter Whitson will hold. Tressway trying to find the right way from way out. Kick on the way pushed it and it's short BYU takes over he got a lot of leg into it. But it was that short and that wide. And Max Hall's reaction. 
I think he just said oh my gosh or whatever they yeah. say in Provo. Well, Oklahoma only has one timeout. They can only stop the clock once. Josh Heupel thought it was good. Sam Bradford was hoping it was. There and you, the fans are in shock. We mentioned the last time that they beat a team this highly ranked 1990. BYU takes a timeout. And they are out of timeouts. But they've got the lead. That's all that matters to them right now. We mentioned that Miami game. I mean, but, but consider this too about BYU and how huge this is. They have lost their last 12 consecutive games to ranked non conference opponents. So, I mean, they, this is a huge win. Bronco Mendenhall, one and six in his time at BYU against ranked opponents. So this this is a huge game for their program. They're going to be at Tulane next week. Todd and then they play Florida State on the 19th. And don't you think that Bobby Biden is watching this thing go oh boy dad gum. <laughs> I didn't know they're this good. And Provo is not an easy place to play no. or get to. Everybody in tight as Max Hall will take a knee after he backpedals a few yards. And now Oklahoma can only stop it once. Wow. A shocker at the new Cowboy Stadium. Max Hall, the a nephew of Danny White, who was a fine quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, didn't play in this stadium, but played in this city. And uh, Max Hall with a chance to Put the cap on a huge, huge win for him and for his team. Sam Bradford, just the blank stare. We don't know how long he'll be out. Hopefully, he'll be back in a hurry as Idaho State comes into Norman next week. But it looks like they're coming in against an 0 and 1 team that will drop out of probably the top 15. I don't know. Hall again takes a knee. We go down. We'll be under a minute. The last drive was something to behold. Max Hall, when he had to have big plays, came up with it to his tight end Pitta. They went 78 yards in 16 plays. Pitta did a lot of the damage. They used almost nine minutes off the clock, and then the big one to the back of the end zone. Uh, he was nine of ten on the drive, and and the two biggest ones, the touchdown, obviously, and when they lined up on that fourth and short. Didn't have any hesitation, knew exactly what they wanted to run, and got the first down to keep the drive alive was very, very special. We mentioned earlier that there's been precedent for something like this to happen. Four years ago, TCU picked off Oklahoma in the first game of the season, and now BYU has done the same. The Cougars upset the third ranked team in the country behind their senior quarterback. Final score BYU 14 Oklahoma 13 the first huge shocker of the college football season. The hero of the night Max Hall let's go down to Heather Cox.